Hey, what's up, guys? The rank 104 player in the world is hammering down anyone in his way with this Hog Rider deck. For many months, Hog Cycle decks have been shamelessly spamming Evolve Skeletons. After the emergency of Evolve Skeletons nerf, they're still strong, but Evolve Firecracker and Evolve Knight stand superior. With an Evolve Knight in front of the Hog Rider and Firecracker, your units will stay alive forever. And the Evolve Firecracker's paw print splash damage stretches a ridiculous range, giving you an extra way to win if your Hog Rider can't get the hammer hits. With reliable anti-air defenses of the Tesla and ways of shutting down all forms of bridge spam with a rail delivery, this Hog Cycle deck has hammered its way to become the best Hog deck in the game. If you only have one evolution, Evolve Knight or Evolve Firecracker work, but I personally would use Evolve Firecracker. It's time to play like pros and use one of the decks that I hate losing to the most to assert dominance. And huge hog rider love to everyone that's supporting the channel with career code Sir Tag. This guy's got Electro Giant in the banner and he's a part of the Alpha Brawler clan. So you know what? We're gonna be brawling immediately with the hog rider and we're definitely gonna get skeletons down to body block that one goblin that would have locked on my tower. Wait, he's in a horrific position. Not only are we going to be able to firecracker in his face, but he also misplaced the Tesla. He wasn't able to drop it down fast enough. So now, since we have Cannoneer, it should be able to one-shot the rest of this little prince. I don't know if he'll pop the ability. It wouldn't make much sense. Also, the biggest benefit of running the Cannoneer is how good it is against almost every win condition in the game. You guys saw Wallbreakers get slaughtered. They are a two elixir card that targets buildings and is typically going to have both connect on a princess tower does not happen in the face of a cannoneer so don't fear if you have the cannoneer you're gonna be able to shut that down really reliably we're also gonna drop our building directly on top of the drill because we know that the tesla is gonna be able to soak up all the damage from the goblins and then the cannoneer one shots the bomber as well if the tesla doesn't do it already beautiful so if you guys are not running a fast cycle deck i would highly recommend running the princess tower it's just a little bit more reliable when you're possibly dealing with bait cards but since you're gonna have royal delivery to clean up a whole bunch of um, scammy and like spammy cards i think you're kind of okay it's interesting that he's going to try to do that again it's not going to work out also you can use the firecracker splash damage and then you can go in for an aggressive play of logging firecracker splash damage plus log is able to kill the wall breakers as well wait this guy's going to decide to go in for a little prince in the worst possible position this is awesome for us i can go for a hog rider now and then i think we're going to release another firecracker at the river the best thing about this is the fact that the firecrackers are able to outrange the bomber and get damage before the bomber hits it. Even though the bomber's got absurd range, it wasn't good enough. So he's going to try to go in for a drill there. I think... Oh, I was hoping the bomber would stay alive. If the bomber stayed alive, that Tesla would have activated King Tower for us. And that would have been even better. You know what? I'm feeling sensational right now. I believe we can go for an earthquake on the Tesla, make him drop units on defense against his next upcoming hog rider, and then wreck him. So our strategy right now is to go in for the Firecracker, Hog Rider, Earthquake on top of his Tesla. I'm not able to hit the building and the tower, so we're just going to focus on hitting the tower here first. Then we're going to go for a log to disrupt the Little Prince. The Little Prince doesn't ramp up its maximum attack speed. And look at the Hog Rider hammering away. All we have to do is go in for a delivery on top of his Wall Breakers whenever he decides to drop that. And we hit Evo Wall Breakers! Wow, this deck is evil. This is actually deplorable that I was able to disintegrate all of his cards that easily. I didn't expect to just have everything that he had on offense get evaporated like that but i guess it's that simple when you have delivery and tesla with evolve knight firecracker this deck is destined to outplay everyone that you play against if they make misplays they're not really gonna be able to break through they're not gonna be able to catch up in damage well you catch a lot of wins so gg and well played the dude tries to frantically defend the hog rider but then he gets scrambled up by the firecracker and he just takes the gigantic l gg and well played we'll keep climbing up the leaderboard i'm happy to play such a solid cycle deck that has the capability of beating drill because drill is the most prevalent deck in the game right now if you can earthquake down their building they're going to be forced to drop units on your hog rider guaranteeing you value with your firecracker every time after drilling down drill we've pushed up to 4200 in the world hey we're playing against a top 162 player in the world let's go you already know that I kind of maybe forgot to swap out the Cannoneer for the Princess Tower. So it's good because we're playing against a top-ranked player. I want to have the maximum chance of beating him if he's going to be this good at the game. Anyway, we're going to go in for a Firecracker directly down the river because I have absolutely no shame. You guys know the deal. Firecracker lining up and solidifying a pretty sizable advantage for us is something that we'll take every time. Delivery completely cleans up the bridge spam. Most people aren't anticipating that. They'll usually be expecting an Ice Spirit fast cycle with skeletons and then maybe a Mighty Miner. But I really like the reliability of the delivery because it can clean up evolutions or an abundance of spam for huge pots of elixir trades, enabling you to go in for more hog riders and getting, you know, better trades on offense generally. So I'm going to go in for another firecracker here. You can tell that this guy built a deck to beat Goblin Drill because he's got Dark Prince 
which can't get moved, even if your opponent's going to fireball it or rocket it, the Dark Prince is still going to stay alive. So that's why he's got it in the deck, because Drill is absolutely everywhere. <laughs> it's funny to see people completely switch up their strategy and now not be prepared for Hog Rider spam. So this deck, despite still being like one of the stronger decks in Clash Royale, it's just not at the top of the food chain that people build their entire deck to beat. Anyway, we're going to be going in for our Skellies in the back. He does have arrows, though, which makes it annoying for our Firecracker. And then he's going to Evo Zap on our Evolved Firecracker, so it's not like I'm able to get that much value there. However, I can go for a Firecracker on this. I wonder. Maybe it still gives us a lot of value. The Splash onto the tower? Yeah, it does! Let's go! Okay, wait, 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 wait. If I log and then we force an Arrows, we might just be able to kill the entire Ram Rider without any damage. Oh, that was absolutely filthy. I feel like we need to sanitize our eyes after that one because that really should not have happened. I think the Dark Prince hits my tower, so I'm going to go for an Evolved Knight. I just didn't want that to charge in my face. That is ridiculous. He lost a Ram Rider on his side of the map. That is a 5 Elixir win condition, my dude. That is insane. All right, well, we're going for a Firecracker in your face again. And I think that even though you're a top 200 player, you really have no way of stopping us. This is a literally playing with my food out here, and we are eating you alive. So, obviously, I'm going to go for Skeletons, and then I'm going to Delivery on all of his stuff when it gets close. I love that the Tesla targeted the Archer as well. We know that he's going to go and spam us. It's totally fine. We're going to log, and we're going to be able to knock back the Ram Rider so it doesn't get a charge. Even if he Evo Zaps, sure, the Ram Rider will hit my tower. But again, I said it wasn't going to charge. I was a man of my word, and it didn't charge in my face. However, we're going to be charging our opponent some damage for that overcommitment because, you know, he has to pay. You, you can't get away with that, bro. Hog Rider is going to slam your tower. The Firecracker is going to stay alive and force out even more Elixir. We're going to preemptively drop our Tesla so we can get back to more of them. And then we can log on everything so the Ram Rider doesn't charge on our tower again. Then we just simply fulfill his destiny of getting deleted with the delivery and Earthquake to shake things up as we solidify a win. Again, extremely easily against one of the best players in the world playing P.E.K.K.A. If you guys are having any troubles against Bridge Band with this deck, it is definitely a skill issue. You should never lose this matchup. And after putting that P.E.K.K.A. player in pain, we've made some gains to 3,600 in the world. And it's time to swap from the absolutely overpowered pay-to-win version of the deck to the free-to-play friendly version with the Princess Tower. No matter what tower, this deck still has sturdy defenses. Hey, what's up, DJ? Peace! So, we're going to be tearing you to pieces. There's no peace out here. There's just Hog Riders hugging in a really not-so-friendly way. So, we're going for an Earthquake and definitely going to be able to get some damage here. Wait, homie's going to have a Hog Rider 2 with a Goblin Gang. I genuinely don't know what this is. If we see Goblin Gang, usually it's going to be a Bait Deck with a Goblin Barrel. Or maybe it's going to be something weird with Elixir Golem when he has Skeleton King. But I haven't seen Hog Rider with that in a while. I bet it's going to be Mega Knight after we see the Bandit, though. Mega Knight is typically going to be played with a lot of Bait cards. So, I mean, maybe this is going to be an unorthodox version of the deck. We're gonna go for a knight so that he's not able to dash in our face, and then we can go for a firecracker and moonwalk away. And then we can go for skeletons to go and pull the dark prince a little bit more too. So the cool thing that we have here is the ability to go keep our firecracker alive with the hog. And I don't think the dark prince is even gonna charge. Meanwhile, the hog rider is gonna be shimmying towards the right hand side, and I think that we can log and kill his firecracker here. I don't know if this is good for us to do. I do wanna kill it though. I don't wanna spend that much elixir on defense. Wait, what? Dude, there's no way. There's no way that the firecracker is still alive. How is that still alive? Oh my gosh, right when I said that, I cursed it. I cursed it. I thought it was going to stay alive for a century. <laughs> and uh, it didn't work out as planned. It's all good. She had a long life. She got a lot of value. She lived, laughed, and loved throughout her entire lifespan. And that skeleton is surprising us with some su super nice sublime damage. I guess we go in for a hog rider again. I hate doing this. Because I think the Dark Prince does connect and I have to log it. Oh, that's not good. I got so greedy. I tried to drop the log a little bit later so that it would roll and possibly hit a Goblin Gang that it would drop. Now I have to eat this damage from the Bandit because I have to even up both damage on both sides. And going for a Knight to activate King Tower. Fortunately, it's a lot easier to activate King Tower against Firecrackers when you have a Princess Tower. It's still possible with a Cannoneer. You just have to drop your Knight up a little bit higher. Also, I don't love the fact that I just cycled my Evolved Knight and now it's probably just going to get countered by a Goblin Gang or possibly an opponent deciding going for a Mega Knight randomly, but he doesn't do that. So we can just go for Tesla. He's going to have to go for an Electro Wizard in the side that he doesn't want. Wait, this is so good for us. I love this. Even though I didn't play well, it's fine. I'm literally running the worst version of the deck without Cannoneer, playing suboptimally, and I'm still winning. That's the reason why this deck is so good right now in the game. You don't even have to be that good at Clash, and you'll still get value almost every interaction. 
I obviously wasn't going to go for a Firecracker there because he had a Dark Prince coming at me, and that would just be a bad decision. I need to be able to defend this and fully focus on stopping his spam. So we're going to go in for a Tesla in the middle, and then I think we can go for a Knight so the Mega Knight doesn't jump on anything that it wants to, and then we can log on top of the Firecracker so it just dies, guaranteed. However, I don't want to do it too soon because he has Goblin Gang, so let's just Delivery, and that should be able to kill everything as well before the Bandit even dashes. Then we can go in for probably an Earthquake... No, 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 let's log. I think that we can knock back the Dark Prince and hit a Goblin Gang too. Wait, dude, I got everything. I got absolutely everything. This guy must be astonished at how much value he just took up for us. <laughs> Bro, that was the log of the century. Knocking back and denying the Dark Prince, slaughtering a Goblin Gang, and giving us a little bit of cheeky chip damage on the Tower too. As predicted, we ripped DJ piece to pieces. And that was a sublime showcase of the true power of this deck. Even though I didn't play well, we still destroyed this guy. It wasn't my skill level, it was the pure power of the deck. And we've rode our Hog Rider up to 3,100 in the world. It's time to see if our stars can align against Cosmology. Y'all already know, if he's gonna go in for a Tesla defense, we definitely wanna be spamming our evolutions because if we, the Tesla's gonna get out of cycle at all, at any point, then our Firecracker blasts him. Oh, no, 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 he's gonna log these skellies. I can feel it, I can sense it. Wait, really? He must not have had log in cycle or in his deck. Usually, you would log the skeletons, keep your princess alive, and be an annoying nuisance in perpetuity. Anyway, we're going to be able to go in for a Firecracker Hog Rider push, and I think that we're going to outcycle his Tesla. We might be able to tickle him with the Hog Rider. Well, I mean, it's not going to be a tickle. It's going to be pretty painful for him. Yo, massive Earthquake value. We are melting his building, slowing down his knight, possibly, and getting a Hog Rider hit for sure. The bad thing is he could activate King Tower with this Firecracker if he wants, and he does. See, that's the unfortunate thing. Sometimes people are good enough to know that they can do that. The good thing that we have rolling for us is we've got Earthquake, we've got Royal Delivery, and we got Log, and he's got a Log Bait deck. So <laughs> we're ready to cook is what I'm trying to say out here. We're expecting to go Princess of the River because that's going to be the only way he really can reliably get damage into our trifecta of spells. So we're predicting the Princess of the River dropping our Knight in front of our tower to preclude the potential of him getting any sizable advantage in the damage perspective. Then we're going to get ready with an Earthquake, but it's probably not worth it because the Tesla's just going to be able to melt it in that position. So it's better for us to fully focus on the offensive end of spamming more Evolve cards like a Knight and a Firecracker and try to break through from that way. Ooh, that was kind of awful on my end. I'm not going to fib. That was meant to be a lot better than that. He'll probably Princess and we'll log it. Or we could Delivery to finish off the Princess and also kill the Knight. I think we Delivery on the Princess and we log on the other stuff. So let's just go Delivery on the Skellies here and the Knight and then log. He's not going to get any damage with the Goblin Barrel. And he's taking a negative one trade every time into that log. So generally, when I play log bait decks, I don't do that. I try to cycle more princesses and maybe force out the log against the princess cycle. If you stack up enough princesses, it will annoy the opponent enough for them to log sometimes. And then you'll be like, ha, got him. And then you can go for the goblin barrel. But usually, like, you have to switch up the goblin barrel placement too and then maybe make me miss a delivery. It's hard for this guy to make it happen is what I'm trying to say. He has to play super, super well. Wait, no, no, no. He's got evolved skeletons. Never mind. He's fine. He's hard chilling. Even after the nerf, that card is obnoxious. Just endlessly multiplies and doesn't die. <laughs> Stop it. Yeah, see, this is what we were talking about. Stacking up as many princesses like that, that's the problem. So I have to kill them. I need to go for like a knight like this. Then I can go delivery on top of the goblin brew. But the same problem arises when he gets more princesses on the map and we don't get the knight on top of the princess. That thing is never going to die unless I can snipe it with a firecracker. But here we go. Here goes nothing. Please don't result in nothing though. All right, we're going to probably go in for an Earthquake on top of a Tesla that's up higher. He's going to rocket instead. That's interesting. That was almost a perfect rocket, but he did mess it up a little bit. So I'm going to get an Evolved Knight in his face. Then I'm going to go for a Log against the Goblin Barrel. And then we're going to go in for a Firecracker Hog Rider on the left-hand side with the Evolved Knight hopefully tanking for the Tesla. If he goes in for a Tesla in the middle, we're going to be able to Earthquake it. I think this is the opportunity that we were looking for. This is what we wanted to see. The Tesla being out of cycle means that we can maybe test our luck with an Adventurous Hog Rider spam. So we're going to go and cycle as quickly as we possibly can. He's going to make sure that I drop something on defense with the log. And he's going to go for a Tesla preemptively on top of the Firecracker. Wait, this is superb. If the Knight can just kill that Tesla, we are going to be able to go in for a Hog Rider here. Pre-Earthquake on the Skeletons or whatever else he wants to drop. Definitely kill the Tesla. Wait, that was one of the weirdest Hog Rider jumps ever. We're going to Delivery and we're going to go for Skeletons. And we should be fine against the Princess. No, he's so good. Yo, this guy is actually cooking like crazy. I don't think that the Skeletons reached my tower. This might be a famous last words, but fortunately it worked out. We're able to pre-log the Goblin Barrel. This guy's playing out of his mind. I can't believe we found a player this good. Anyway, the Knight is going to be able to tank, so then we can possibly go in for a Firecracker on his Evolved Knight, because I think the Knight is going to waddle on the left-hand side. If we're not exurbly unlucky, this should be good. Uh, we're pretty unlucky. We're very unlucky. Wait, we might lose this game. 
because he can out damage me with rocket cycle. That's one of the huge downsides of this matchup is if he gets into an even footing, he can rocket cycle you and do way more damage than your earthquake. Especially if I have to drop earthquakes on defense um, on situations where I want to splash onto his princess and then hopefully be able to go and kill the Teslas. So he's just trying to keep me in rocket cycle range. That's his entire mission right now. So I need to go in for skellies. I can probably go in for an earthquake on this, then go in for a knight, and then try to defend everything again with the log a little bit further back, because I expected him to do that. Let's go for a hog rider, pull everything back here, then go in for another hog rider if we can. We're trying to get two Evo knights on the field at the same time, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we can only get one if we're lucky. Wait, I missed the earthquake. What am I doing? I'm griefing. I'm griefing. I missed the earthquake. That was definitely supposed to break through the Tesla. If it did, I think we would have won. No, I'm screwed. Unless, unless there's a will, unless there's a way, unless there's a strategy here. Is the firecracker going to shoot the tower? It hit the tower. There's no way. There's no way. Oh my gosh. I missed the earthquake, but the firecracker didn't miss the opportunity to steal the match. That was the most undeserved win of my life. I had the game locked up if I just earthquaked on the Tesla, but my fat fingers failed me. Luckily, broken evolutions never miss an opportunity to break down towers. All right, it's time to end with a bang. Hopefully we can secure a dominant W out here. If we can cycle a night, we're to be on track. You know, just spamming evolutions is the way to play. Oh, come on, dude. We drop a knight and he has to mega knight. He has to evolve our knight in our face. He's like, zero card evolution. <laughs> it's kind of derpy to see that because mega knight is not a card that you see cycled in the back in single elixir. It's a lot better to cycle in double. We're able to log an earthquake to finish off the firecracker. And then I think we're okay defending this with a firecracker and then a knight. Reason why I'm doing that is obviously I'm spamming evolutions. I could have went for a delivery, but why would you do that when you can get two evolutions on the field a little bit faster? It's always what you want to do in Clash. Even if they're suboptimal spending more elixir, it's generally better. And obviously, if the opponent doesn't have a good way of cleaning up this firecracker, it's going to be a never-ending nuisance. Look at that thing. What is happening here? My guy, what are you thinking right now? <laughs> There's no way. There's no way it's still alive. What is happening? <laughs> that firecracker was immortal. I'm losing my brain cells right now, but hopefully we're not losing this game. You know, it is 2.38 a.m. when I'm playing Clash Royale. Peak mental performance late at night. You guys let me know, are you early morning warriors or are you guys night owls? Recently, I've been more of a night owl recently just because, I don't know, I've been loving playing Clash Royale right before bed and I kind of just keep playing. So <laughs> it's always that one more game factor for me. You guys let me know if that happens to you. You're like one more game and then two hours later, you're like, oh, about that. Anyway, getting back to business, he's probably going to Mega Knight on this. We're going to show him the business by having this Hog Rider lock on the tower. I think if we're able to defend this, we're in a prime position to win the game. I don't know if it's possible because he's going to be up a lot of Elixir, but we can hope. So we're going to set up our Tesla very early on. He's going to Evo Barbs on the other side. We can go for Skeletons here. I definitely need to be able to defend this with a Knight and then use a Firecracker and splash onto his stuff and then use Delivery when I absolutely need to against the Minions and the Firecracker. The Firecracker is the prime candidate to screw me. So I need to make sure that that doesn't hurt me. Everything else, I think we can defend minimalistically, right? The minions will die to the tower, but I can't say the same against the firecracker that stays alive on the side of the map and just keeps getting knocked back. Oh, all right. Well, that is interesting. I can guess we can go in for this and we don't want to log. It doesn't make sense to. I'm pretty sure that the firecracker... Oh, it was really close to hitting my tower. That was so close to hitting my tower. What the heck? Dude, chill. Calm down, my guy. Calm down. Chill. Jill, you don't even understand how annoying you are right now. Okay, we're in a hog rider. Stop him from firecrackering me for a bit. The good thing is we can earthquake on a skeleton army because he has no elixir since he just cycled a zap. I think he loses because of that. He spent so much elixir on offense and I caught him. I'm like, yo, dude, you're going to get caught in the snare and we don't even care what you do. At this point, we earthquake and log and we secure the bag. The beautiful thing about this deck is the capability of punishing the opponent with a hog rider when they don't have elixir. As long as you can identify their card cycle and how much elixir they have, you drop a hog rider and you slime them because the cost efficiency with hog forces out a four elixir building every time and you can break through that with an earthquake too. Meanwhile, you're able to net massive pause elixir trades against the Mega Knight, keeping their bridge spam captive with your royal deliveries and evolved knights. Basically, you keep their cards in a prison while you lock up the win. Hammer the like button if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content and have an amazing rest your day.